Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's keeping well. So last week I had flu, so that's why there was no video. So today I decided to visit famous poet Keith's house. So come along with me and it's situated in a beautiful leafy area of Hampstead Heath. It's in North London. When I came out of Hampstead Heath Overground Station, it started to rain. So luckily I was wearing waterproof jacket. So it did save me. <laughs> so let's explore together and enjoy all the showrooms and it will give us an insight into Keith's life. So please don't skip the video and keep watching. Uh, so just grab a cup of coffee and relax. So Keith's house was built in 1814 to 1850 as a pair of semi-detached houses made to look like one larger house. One half was owned by critic and rights of Charles Wentworth and another by Charles Brown, a poet. Twenty years after Keats lived here, a retired actress called Alyssa Jane Chester bought the property and turned it into one home. Keats moved here when he was 23. He wrote many of his most famous works most of his odds, including Odd to a Nightingale and Odd to a Gracian Urn, these were written in the spring of 1819. It is also here he fell in love with the Fanny Brown, who moved here into another half of the house with her mother and siblings after Charles Wentworth moved away. So they became engaged in 1819 but never married because Keith was a struggling poet then and also suffered from tuberculosis. So this room is Keith's parlor and here you will see selection of his books, the print of Shakespeare and some of his personal items. Here you will see the beautiful portrait hanging just above the fireplace. That looks fabulous, isn't it? I'm so much fascinated by the vintage style decor. It gives us an insight into people's life. So that's the Charles Brown parlor and was used by both friends for leisure and entertaining. Today the room tells the story of the literary and social circle which Keats associated within Hampstead and beyond. I am always fascinated by fireplaces and interior decorations. Actually there is a child inside me who always crave for all things beautiful and attractive.
So these are some of the works of Keats. Here you will see a collection of its poetry books. So that's the corridor with some portraits. So that's the Chester room at the end of the corridor. Did not exist in Keats time. It was added after 1838 when the house was converted into one home by retired actress Alyssa Jane Chester. She used the room to entertain her guests and it is still used for this purpose today, hosting special events as part of year-round programs. So that's the kitchen of the house. The Welsh dresser is also original to this room. It looks really fabulous. I just loved it. When I entered into this kitchen, I just got the feeling of lived in and I was just visualizing in my mind that how they used to live here and worked in the kitchen. The servants of these families would have worked and lived in these spaces and you can still see the bells used to call them. So these are the bells probably. You can also hear the sounds of kitchen life in the 1800s a bit spookish so that's the Fanny Brown's room the engagement ring which Keats gave to Fanny Brown is on display in this room along with the portraits of her and some personal items too. Enjoy the interiors and vintage style decoration in this room.
this side of the house tells the story of Keith's final journey to Rome where he died on 23rd February 1821. Keats travelled to Rome in the hope that the warm climate might improve his health but sadly Keith died, aged just 25. So that's the Keats bedroom. This simple room contains the original fireplace, mantelpiece and surround. Sadly, it was here in February 1820 that Keats first realized that he was suffering the symptoms of tuberculosis. That's so heartbreaking. I was just thinking in my mind, he must have beautiful plans to live his life with his fiance. He was so young when he died, just 25. So that's the Charles Brown bedroom. It really tells us the story of how other poets and artists, particularly the pre Raphaelites were inspired by the imagery in Keats' poetry. So just enjoy all the items in the room and the vintage decoration. Some lines from Keats' poem. I think of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness but still will keep a bore quiet for us and asleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing such beautiful words from a famous poet who loved life so much please do like subscribe and share my channel as it takes a lot of effort and time to make such kind of vlogs Whatever the weather, we just go out and we just make vlogs for you guys. So please show some love to my channel. Thank you so much. Take lots of care and have a beautiful Christmas and Merry Christmas again. Please do join me again for the next vlog. Bye.